Well, I think the, 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 mo the most important part to answering that, the question about, you know, what on earth do we do when faced with moral dilemmas is, is maybe the prior question of how do I even know if I'm in one to begin with? There's a big difference between a temptation and a moral dilemma. Temptation is where there's a conflict between your self-interest and a moral value or virtue. And in general, you, 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 opt, you go with the moral value and let the chips fall where they will with your self-interest. A moral dilemma is a little bit trickier because that's when you have a collision, a conflict between two or more value-driven interests, you know, where you have moral principles or virtues that actually come into conflict. Right? For example, uh, one of the clearest examples of this is when Corrie ten Boom, uh, the Dutch uh, woman in World War II, who hid Jews in her basement and was well known for her book, The Hiding Place, on that. When she got the knock at her door that says, are you hiding Jews? Right? She was faced with a moral dilemma, a conflict of values between truth-telling and the protection of life. And so she had, to, she had to make a very painful choice about what to do in, those, in that situation. And remember, when, when, when moral values or when God's commands conflict, that's not a commentary on the, the truthfulness and reliability of God's commands. It's rather a commentary on the broken, fallen world in which God's commands work themselves out. And given the brokenness of the world, we shouldn't be surprised that we have moral dilemmas. In fact, I, I think the surprising thing is that we don't have them more often. And maybe the reason that we don't is that so many of them just fly under the radar and we never recognize them. And so the business person, the physician, the nurse, uh, the, the attorney, uh, all, of, all of those face potential dilemmas in which moral values can come into conflict. That's, I think, the most important part is just being able to recognize that you have a dilemma when you see it. Okay? In chapter four, we, we outline a model for making moral decisions. It's not like a computer program where it's sort of you know, data in, right answer out, but it's more a series of questions to make sure that all the bases get covered. So you gather the facts, you are clear about what the, what the ethical issue is, what's the conflict, you outline the values, you select alternatives, you weigh the principles and values, you assess consequences, and then finally you get off the dime and make a decision. Sort of the bottom line on this is, in, is if you have an alternative that satisfies all of your competing values, you've hit a home run and you've got a, a, a complete win-win situation and you make a decision and everybody's happy. Most of the time that's not true. And so you have to wait values, and you have to have good reasons for weighting values like they do. For, I think Corey Ten Boom weighted the value of the protection of life to be, to be more significant and a weightier obligation than uh, the obligation to tell the truth. So uh, there's, I think there's a lot to be said, and we've used this in a variety of settings. We've used this in hospitals and businesses uh, with students. Uh, we've even used it with people in their families. Uh, and it can be, I think, very useful just as to facilitate discussion in the workplace, for example, when you're facing a, an ethical dilemma. I had a, had a guy, one of my students years ago, who was the CEO of a small real estate company. And the first, we went over this in class that on, in the evening, and he was so relieved. He said, I have a huge moral dilemma that I'm facing. And I've got a meeting on this at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, and now I've got a way to facilitate our discussion. And to see, you, it helps you see the forest for the trees. And you know, sometimes it's easy to, to talk all the way around a dilemma without coming to a decision. And so this will enable the person to put it in uh, aviation terms, to not circle the field forever, but to actually land the plane and make a decision.